Let's get started with writing shaders in React 3 Fiber JS. I just want to show you my most recent kind of shader work. It involves a sphere, the same sphere we have been creating, but I use a, a, a vertex shader. The vertex shader is used to manipulate the vertices and, to, and I use Perlin noise to do that. And then a fragment shader is used to give it different color. So all of this is done inside a shader. If I take out the shader, then you'll just get the same standard sphere. But with it, we get something a little bit more interesting. So today I'm going to cover actually how to set up those shaders. And in the next video, I'll show you how to do all the animated stuff and interactivity. Let's go to our VS code. And I want to just suggest that we install this extension. So WebGL GLSL editor, it gives us syntax highlighting and also formatting and it makes the shader writing process a little bit more enjoyable. The first thing you can do is um, create the shaders. So I'm going to create it alongside this component. I'm going to call this sphere dot uh, vertex dot GLSL. Oh, before I start writing, I'll show you how to how to import it. So we can import it like show just as we would reference any asset. Sorry, that should be there. But this time um, in Avit and Astro at least, we can append this question mark raw, which means it will import it as a string. And that will become apparent when I swap out this material, mesh standard material, with a shader material. And you'll see it's just as simple as that. And then we can supply this property called vertex shader. And you can see here that vertex shader expects a string. Like you could actually write in a vertex shader just like that. I mean, sorry, I shouldn't something along the lines of this, right? Um, but it won't be very, um, you won't get syntax highlighting and you kind of won't be very manageable, which is why I like to put in a separate file. And then uh, I will show you what the result is, is that the result is that the sphere has disappeared. Well, it's still there, but it no longer has a vertex shader. And if I open up the, the console, we can see, actually having a console open whilst the writing shaders is very helpful because uh, we don't get errors inside this console here because they are shader compilation issues. They're almost like runtime. They happen in a complete, I mean, they happen on a GPU, not a CPU. But you can see here that there's missing main material. So let's define that main function, not material. Let's go inside our vertex shader. And now we're actually going to write a vertex shader. And the vertex shader is responsible for taking a 3D mesh, which has no concept of where in the world you're going to put it, and display it in a correct position on screen. So you need to know um, two things, right? You've got mesh material. You need to know where in the world the game developers put it in the world. And then you need to know where the player is um, located. Say it was a first person game, then the um, the camera would change. And so that, that information is important because of what I'm going to do now. We're going to use this keyword, which is this expected from uh, WebGL SL shaders. And we're going to say the GLL position is equal to projection. When you see projection, think camera, model view matrix. Sorry, projection, think screen. The model view is the uh, model, think world position, view, think the camera, and then multiply by effect th uh, the position. Position is a built-in uh, mesh property that's given to you, so you don't have to define that. And that will then say, I'm not expecting you to know any linear algebra, I for sure, for sure don't know it properly, but this is converting from local position onto the clip position. So that's, let's just say local position onto your screen position. And then if we go back, we can see that a sphere has returned. However, it's all red. That's because when we write 
custom shaders, we're now responsible for not only the vertex shader, but also another shader called the fragment shader. And fragments, you can think of fragments as pixels before they've been colored. So let's go and color them. We'll create that fragment shader. So I'm going to call that sphere.fragment.glsl. I'm going to import it. into our three canvas file and then also append raw so we import it as a string. And uh, you're probably going to get an error because there's now an empty fragment shader. And so let's start defining it. And then let's, this is the most simple fragment shader you can write. So of course void main and gl color now, now in a fragment because it was not returning position, returning color. Sorry, it should be gl frag color. Return a four component vector because r, g, b, a. So that's red, green, blue and alpha. We can return the color uh, or the um, yellow, I think. What's yeah, yellow, red and green equals yellow. Red plus. So you see here, but what? So we're, we're turning, we're returning a um, a fragment shader. However, it's not all that interesting. I mean, I'm moving the background, so there's definitely movement, but the sphere itself is not that dynamic. The reason being is because what gives um. 3D objects, a sense of kind of the depth and the 3D is lighting, is solely lighting. And let's now see how we can add in our own sort of lighting. So I'm going to implement something called diffuse lighting. And it is, um, it is a very simple lighting technique, but it is it does form the basis of more advanced lighting techniques. So the, the idea is that you need to know where the light is coming from. And then you need to know at which vertices are facing that light. So all the, fa the, the fa vertices that are facing light should be better, more lit. The vertices that aren't facing the light are darker, almost like the, the sun hitting the moon, sun rays hitting the moon kind of lighting. That's what I, I see diffuse lighting being. So to do that, we need to define a light position. I'm going to put it, I'm going to call it light pause. And I'm going to put it on, oh, let's say two meters to the left, uh, two meters up on the Y and I'll leave it on the same X, uh, the Z, Z axis. So. Uh, one quirk of GLSL shaders is that these must be float and that explicitly float. So even if you're given a number two, you still need to define to put a decimal place in there. Now we need the the normal. So now we need, so we've got the light position, but we also need the normal. So we need to go back into our vertex shader because if you think about the rendering pipeline or let me cover the rendering pipeline, you get your mesh, it goes to your vertex shader. It does something called rasterization. Then it goes to your fragment shader and it goes in a kind of in a one way street kind of manner. So in order to get a normal from the mesh, in the same way we've got a position here, we need to pass it 
to the, the fragment shader. And we do that using a keyword called varying. I give it a type, so I know it's a VEC3 type, and I'm gonna call it uh, V to denote to the note varying, and then underscore normal. And I'm going to say V normal equals, I believe, is it Matt? Uh, v normal. Um, so the normal we receive from the mesh is going to be in local space. So we need to convert that to world space. And what we do is So we can simply, I'm going to define v underscore normal, and now I assign to v underscore normal equals normal. That lets me get the the normal from the the mesh and then pass it to the fragment shader. And the way we receive it in the fragment shader is to say varying for three v normal, and we can start to use it. Uh, one thing we can quickly do is just to Return the V normal and see what is what we get. Now this does have a bug in it. Now we can apply the light to that V normal, and we do that using a, um, a function called a dot product. So we take the dot product between the light position and the normal we will receive an angle of how much we're facing the light, which will be apparent when I actually do it. So we say, we can say light uh, amount, or let's call it diffuse amount, so dot light pos, and then V normal. Now there's a few things that I'll get onto that I haven't done yet. Um, and then I can return Let's just return that entire thing. Because I need to normalize it. Now let's see what that looks like. All right, okay, so we can see that um, we've got a light over here and it's like shining on the um, object. So you've got some real, real simple lighting. There's a few things we need to do to, to kind of finish things off. I mean, we can make this look a bit better, but, um, but and the reason why it's not looking better is because we haven't, we're not tr yet treating our normal as a direction. Um, so if I normalize this, that will give it a unit length for zero. And then we can sort of multiply it to kind of change the intensity. I mean, in reality, you'll give a bit more parameters to this, but like you can see what's happening. Um, let me just go over a, a bug with this. So if I add in a transform control to the mesh form and change its position, I anticipate this to not work, not to, so you can see it's not really responding to where the light is. Let's give a transform control to the light as well. Oh, sorry. That light's hard coded in. So that light is somewhere there. Uh, let's give a transform control to the light, which will be, um, say, Z. 
position. It was two, 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 if I remember. So that light is here. That's just for illustration purposes. Um, yeah, it's not adapted according to light. And that's because we're still treating the normal uh, directly from the mesh. And remember, a mesh is unaware of where you're putting it in your side, your 3D world. And so to change that, we need to do a quick calculation, which is to convert the normal from object space or local space into world space. And to do that, we do something like this model matrix. Multiply by normal. And if that all worked, Let's convert our normal, which is in local space, into world space. And to do that, it kind of hinted at what we're doing here. We've got some multiplication going on. Um, we need to get the model matrix and multiply it by the normal. But our normal is in X, Y, Z. So we need to, and model and matrices are multiplied by VEC4. So we need to add a little bit extra and this is this multiplication here is gonna return a vec4 but we can see here that that's defined as a vec3 so we can wrap that around a parentheses and simply return xyz and now we should have a world space position aware lighting i mean so we go to that side of the light it's going to be colored accordingly. Very nice, very nice. And there you have it. The world's most basic vertex shader and fragment shaders.